Hi, my name is Christy and this is the American Chinese Food Show where we analyze historical artifacts like vintage menus, recipe books, photographs and text to tell the story of American Chinese food. I've been thinking of starting a new series where we talk through a menu from a Chinese restaurant in every state in the United States. I'm super into road trips and have driven cross country twice and I've been to over 40 states but I always try to experience the local specialties so I can't say I ate Chinese food in many of those states I visited. I think there might be something interesting in comparing the variations based on regional things like environmental factors, cultural differences, um, culinary palates to even Chinese migration patterns that impact the composition of a menu offering. I'm thinking of choosing from the top results of Chinese restaurants in every state capital. The reason I choose the state capital is that they're usually not the biggest metropolitan city where you see the latest fads, but they are centrally located with some interesting history. The purpose of this is to get a representative sample of what American Chinese food is across the country. The downside of this, of course, is I have to talk about the food without tasting them. So these won't be restaurant reviews, um, but more like an analysis of menus uh, with some cool stories, hopefully. So not much different than what I've kind of been doing with this channel. Since we're talking about Peking Noodle Parlor in Butte, Montana, I thought we could start with the state of Montana. Helena was founded as a gold camp during the Montana Gold Rush and established in 1864. There are about 77,000 people living in the metro area of Helena according to the 2010 census. There are five Chinese restaurants in the city of Helena including the Panda Express. One interesting thing I found is that a restaurant called Red Sugar Dim Sum, claiming to be Montana's first dim sum restaurant, opened their second location only two months ago in Helena after their first in Bozeman. I guess other types of Chinese food are making their way in Montana. Today we will talk about the menu of Jade Garden. It's situated in the prime location of the biggest strip mall in Helena with fierce competition like McDonald's, Buffalo Wild Wings and Panda Express. Owners Susan and Lumley included on the cover of the menu a little thanks to their patrons. It's been a family business since 1995. The 90s always feels like it's just 10 years ago for me. Um, the restaurant has been around for actually 26 years. They are also proud to call out that they have been innovating and creating original recipes beyond the traditional Chinese American offerings. And this is what I want to focus on with this menu. First thing I notice is they use simplified Chinese, meaning the owner or whoever typed up the menu is from mainland China instead of Taiwan or Hong Kong. They have 10 appetizers, nothing unusual except for beef tuan er. Chuan er originated in the Xinjiang region of China and is a product of the Chinese Islamic cuisine. They're usually lamb, but now you also see chicken, pork, and beef with cumin seeds, dried red pepper flakes, salt and pepper. A few years ago, I was backpacking in Xi'an in northern China in the winter and I got a terrible cold. And all I wanted was steamed vegetables because my throat was killing me. And all I could find was tuan tuan with an insane amount of spices. So I kind of have a tuan tuan PTSD. I can feel the desire from the owner of Jay Garden to really bring in more Chinese cuisine than what we usually see with this appetizer item. I like how the menu is more contextually categorized into signature, rich, harmonious, and invigorating based on taste instead of ingredients. Rich includes all of the American Chinese chicken classics. I was happy to see the item Mandarin chicken, which is la ti ti, a traditional Sichuanese dish originated in Chongqing with dried Sichuan ch chili peppers, um, spicy bean paste, Sichuan peppers, gar garlic, and ginger. There are more chilies than chicken pieces in the dish, but you're supposed to only pick out and eat the chicken. Unfortunately, this item is no longer available in the latest menu two years later and is the only item that was removed. I also want to point out that they have two Thai noodles and two American dishes, burger and grilled chicken salad on the menu. I personally think this is a good business move as long as the brand is strong, so you can cater to parties where one or two people just want something else. 
Helena actually has good access to a sampling of East and Southeast Asian food with three Japanese, two Thai, and one Vietnamese restaurant. But there are two dishes that really set Jade Garden apart for me. First, the seafood in Bird's Nest, the Phoenix Nest. You remember how I was nerding out on that Bird's Nest in my first episode on 1819 Mon Lay One menu? We're seeing it today, of all places, Montana. Um, it says in the menu it serves on our famous potato nest. So instead of using taro strips or egg noodles, they're using potatoes and it looks really good. The second one is yin yang shrimp, which costs $26 and is the most expensive item on the menu. The idea of something cooked two ways is pretty common in Chinese cooking, but yin yang listed on this menu in this case, not to be confusing, is actually not the Chinese philosophy yin and yang on the concept um, on dualism. Is It actually comes from mandarin ducks. There's a male and a female and they always stay together. In Chinese, we use mandarin ducks to describe a perfect couple or perfect pairing. In food though, mandarin duck yin yang, yin yang in Cantonese is actually mix and match with contrasting flavors. The idea of yin yang in food started in Hong Kong in the 40s and 50s when a lot of Chinese chefs trained in western restaurants in big ports like Shanghai or Shandong fled to Hong Kong bringing the knowledge on this western style food, including tomato sauce made with ketchup and cream sauce made with evaporated milk. Yin Yang is usually sour and sweet, but for Lam Li, the owner of Jade Garden, he combined probably two of his top dishes, seeing that they are the first items on the menu, walnut shrimp and pepper shrimp, so this mix and match is sweet and salty, um, we see some of his creativity here. I'm not able to find the origin of walnut shrimp. There are some rumors online of it coming from Hong Kong as well. There are two dishes that started showing up in the 60s in Hong Kong that do contain shrimps and mayonnaise, so it is very likely. The first one is when chefs try to create western dishes and one of them in, is shrimp salad. The mayonnaise, get this, is actually a mix of Miracle Whip and condensed milk. This is how many old school Chinese restaurants in Hong Kong are still making their mayo today. The second dish is a dim sum item added around the same time, deep fried shrimp dumpling with a mayo dip. Neither is similar enough to what we have for walnut shrimps today, which is made with deep fried walnuts or pecans mixed with honey, and marinated shrimps are lightly coated with cornstarch then deep fried. So I looked through some American Chinese restaurant menus. Um, the first time walnut shrimp shows up on a menu is on the 1930s Tao Tao restaurant in San Francisco. It says here is almond, but Chinese is actually walnut. But I doubt it's the same walnut shrimp we have today. The next time it shows up is already in eight, 1987 from a takeout place in New York. In Jade Garden, Montana though, the shrimp batter is a thick tempura style batter instead of a light, usually transparent coating. The sauce is also much thicker and creamier when the usual only uses a spoonful of mayo and condensed milk to give that sweet tanginess. This could be for streamlining the deep frying process, so all deep fried dishes on the menu can use the same batter, but it could also be because of catering more to patrons' taste. Overall, I think the menu really shows that Jade Garden is a family-run business because it has a lot of distinct small personal touches here and there to try to make the dining experience really good for the diners. Well, this is the end of our episode. Comment below of what you think of this new series, um, like what you want to see more of. Uh, if you like our content, subscribe to our channel. See you soon.